Now, from the studios of Into Tomorrow in Miami, this is ITTV. Howdy, tech fans. Welcome back to another Into Tomorrow update brought to you by Newegg.com. I'm your host, Dave Graveline. We're back in our Miami studios this week after recording our radio program from the Consumer Electronics Show Press Preview in New York City. We invite you to visit our show page where you can see pictures of our guests and products mentioned as well as listen to and watch all the interviews. We saw some pretty cool stuff there and you'll want to check it out at graveline.com. Enjoy. Some of our listeners have been asking about wireless speaker systems lately and how they can stream their music throughout their homes easily. Well, this week our very own Rob Almanza has a wireless audio system that just might do the trick. Check it out. Thanks, Dave. It's no secret that there are a ton of accessories and speaker systems for iPods. However, not a lot can do what the EOS Digital Wireless Speaker System does. The system is pretty much plug and play. So, what does this solve for us? It streams music from your iPod or MP3 player, computers or CD players throughout your house. All you have to do is dock your iPod on the base station and draw power to a wireless speaker. If you don't have an iPod, don't worry, you can plug in any audio device to the auxiliary input. The speaker plugs in directly to an outlet where you can stretch out the very short power cord and set the speaker on a table. Final step is to hit play. In seconds, the music will start playing on both the main station and wireless speaker, each with their very own volume control. There's really no thinking to it. That's what we like most about it. The base station can handle up to four wireless speakers. Once the base detects a speaker is on within range, you'll see a light turn on, indicating it's been connected, while on the speaker, the antenna will stop blinking. We were surprised to see how fast it detects it. On average, it took about three to five seconds. The EOS system uses digital technology called GigaWave Wireless to stream your music, so it shouldn't be interrupted by Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and cordless phones at home. Since we are in the audio business, being radio guys, I can tell you the sound quality is just okay. It can be better. However, the mainstream consumer may not mind it. They kind of sound better in smaller rooms. We did encounter some delays, and if you have two speakers very close to each other, they won't play well. Also, make sure you keep them within range. EOS claims it can reach up to 150 feet indoors and up to 300 feet outdoors. But how many electrical outlets do you find outdoors? One of the things we found to be odd is that the main station does not have a power button. The wireless speakers, on the other hand, do have a manual control. But you'll have to unplug the power cord from the base unit. What were they thinking? Also, plugging in the speaker to an outlet is not always convenient because of placement. The best place to do this turned out to be in the kitchen or bathroom, where you usually find outlets higher than others, at least to where you can actually hear the music best. Otherwise, you may need extension cords since the power cord is quite short. Either way, we did enjoy the EOS digital wireless speaker system. With the holidays around the corner and our barbecues grilling, these would work great in your backyard to entertain your family while food is being prepared. If you want to get one of these, you'll find it for around 250 bucks. The base unit is bundled with one wireless speaker like this one. Additional speakers will cost around 130 bucks. Reporting from my backyard, enjoying the great tunes. Back to you, Dave. Thanks, Rob. You're right. How bizarre is it that it doesn't have an off switch? I couldn't find one either. But I am impressed with how simple it is to set up, and it can come in handy for a lot of people. So do check it out. It's time for our audience to participate. What do you think about the EOS wireless digital speaker system? Do you have one? Do you want one? Please leave your comments below or call our show right now, 1-800-899-INTO. That's 800-899-4686. This ITTV Into Tomorrow TV update is brought to you by Newegg.com. Buy and save on electronics today. Visit Newegg.com now for jaw-dropping savings on close to 40,000 tech products. Once you know, you Newegg. Do you remember when the first jukebox made its debut? Well, with details, here's Chris Graveline and This Week in Tech History. This week in 1877, Thomas Edison announced the invention of the phonograph, a machine that could record and play sound. In 1889, the first jukebox went into operation at a saloon in San Francisco. 
1969, the Apollo 12 command module splashed down safely in the Pacific Ocean, ending the second manned mission to the moon. And this week in 1998, America Online, the largest internet access service, announced plans to acquire Netscape Communications in a deal valued at $4.2 billion. That's our look back at This Week in Tech History. Thanks, Chris, for taking us down technology memory lane every week. Do you want to be in the know? Well, we recommend you subscribe to our free once-a-week tech newsletter. It's easy. Just log on to intotomorrow.com if you're not already there, and just put your email address in the red text box right there. You see it? We'll see you in your inbox soon. Coming up in a couple of weeks, it's time to pack our bags again. Well, you can join us virtually. We'll be broadcasting from the Autodesk University in Las Vegas again this year, where we'll learn, connect, and explore the latest in the tech design world. Stay tuned. Meantime, thanks for joining us into tomorrow. Remember, we need to hear from you and want you to participate in our three-hour weekly show. Thanks for joining us.